So in this video, I will be doing a 5G internet speed test and comparing the results between two different 5G routers. The first one is going to be a ZTE MC888 and the second one is also a ZTE MC888. However, this one here has been modified by router mods and this has their full router modification on it, which consists of four SMA ports for 4G and also four SMA ports for 5G. Okay, so moving on to the testing and the first of the two routers that I will test will be the unmodified MC888, which means that I am obviously testing for the internal antennas of the router. And as we can see here, the positioning of the router means that I am able to pick up a 5G signal. Once again, this is with its internal antennas. Now for anybody who is interested in anything such as signal strength or signal to noise ratio, here is the stats page for the router for that information. Now I won't be going deep diving with anything to do with these stats pages here. However, for those of you who are interested, just pause the video at this point so you can read through the information and then move on at your own leisure. Now moving on to what I consider to be the most important part of these types of tests and these are the actual speed tests. So what I'm doing here is using speedtest.net for measuring the upload speed, the download speed, and also the ping or the latency. So what I have done here is three consecutive speed tests, and then I will work out the average for all the results. So this will basically give us a true average speed test for the download speed, the upload speed, and also the ping and the latency. Now moving on to the next set of tests, and as we can clearly see here with all of these external antenna cables attached to the router, this is the fully modified version of the MC888. And once again, for anybody who is interested in anything such as signal strength and signal to noise ratio, this is the stats page for the router. And again, just pause this and read through it and then continue at your own leisure. And then move Moving on to the speed tests and once again I have done the same thing here which is to run three consecutive speed tests for which I will then get the averages for the download speed, the upload speed and also the ping or the latency. However, and immediately I'm fairly sure you will be able to see here that there is an immediate difference between the unmodified router and this, the modified router. But anyway, what I will do is get to the averages shortly and we can see exactly just how big this difference is. Now moving on to the comparison for the results and just a quick recap on the screen right now what we can see are two side by side pictures showing us the positioning and the setup of the routers and also for anybody who is interested here are some comparison side by sides here for the stats pages on both of the routers as well. But moving over onto the all important speed testing, as we can see here, the first thing I'm just going to quickly go over is the ping and the latency. Now on the unmodified router, that latency is 32 milliseconds, whereas on the modified router, it is only 27 milliseconds. Not a huge difference, but still a difference nonetheless. Now moving over to the upload speeds, and this is where we will start seeing some difference differences now. So with the unmodified router, we are getting 30.9 megabits per second, which is still very respectable for these types of routers. However, the upload speed on the modified router has shot right up to 79.2 megabits per second, which is quite a considerable difference there. However, when we move over to the download speeds, we actually see see even bigger differences. So as far as the unmodified router is concerned, 
its average download speed is 42.1 megabits per second. Once again, not a bad result. However, once we move over to the fully modified router, what we are seeing here is a download speed of 469.7 megabits per second, which is absolutely astronomical compared to 42. Well, actually, what we are seeing here is just over 11 times the difference between the download speeds of the unmodified router compared to the fully modified router. Okay, so to an end summary then, and this is going to be really quick because I'm fairly sure that those test results there will have shown you or explained to you probably all the things that you need to know about the advantages of using a modified router with external outdoor antennas. However, there are just a couple of things to maybe bear in mind here. And one of those is going to be these types of results will change from person to person. And that's going to be basically down to how far away you are from your cell towers. Are you in direct line of sight? And are there like a lot of obstacles between you and your cell towers? So basically what I'm saying there is this. Some people are going to get worse results than what I've just shown you there. But then some people are going to get much better results. It really is just down to your location and how close you are to your cell towers and what types of obstacles may or may not be in the way. Now, another thing to also consider here is the fact that once you get this modification done by router mods, you no longer have the ability to use internal antennas on the router. You have to use external antennas. Anyways, that should just about do it for this video and hopefully you have found it useful. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.